uh, with that, uh, let me now uh, bring on your screens. Uh, it's time for the next panel discussion, the first panel discussion of Soracon 2020. This discussion is on connected data, what, why, and how. What are the current data challenges, key pain points, requirements, and solutions available? The view on the current industry business problems with data storage, and what are the current efforts and solutions? Please join me in welcoming our esteemed panelists, Shane Wang of Intel, Wei Luo of Huawei, Ravi Sudhakar Kamampati of Microsoft, and Ishiro Shimada of Sony. And the panel discussion will be moderated by Tathagat Verma of Walmart Lab. Over to you, Tathagat. Sorry, uh, I was on mute. Uh, is it, am I audible now, Anvit? Yes, Tathagat, you're Thank you. very clear. You're Thanks audible. a lot, Anvit, and um, uh, welcome everyone to our first panel discussion. Uh, and uh, I know we are running a little behind time, but I'll try to see how we can really um, make up for that. So uh, it's my uh, profound pleasure to welcome my fellow panelists to this. Uh, uh, I'll introduce the, uh, to the panel as well. Our topic here that we are talking about is connected data, what, why, and how. And um, just to kind of set the context for connected data, what we have seen is the whole big data movement happening in the sort of a public uh, space, right? So you have a lot of big data movement happening. Now within the enterprise, what is the equivalent of that, right? So in some sense, we have started to recognize that the enterprise also needs to have a way for it to stitch all the data together and bringing some kind of a connected data in some way, shape or form there. And there are uh, there are multiple challenges there. So if, if I see some of the key challenges is that we have uh, multiple, we, we, typically the organizations are really more organized around the functions. So you might have marketing and sales and R&D and customer uh, relations. Uh, and then the challenge is how do we stitch it together because the value is really created horizontally, but the departments are set up vertically. So that's one challenge that definitely I want to pick the brains of our panelists and see how do we really bring it all together. Uh, the second problem is how do we really uh, kind of create the so-called golden record, which is like that one single thing with, where, where you can have a very meaningful view of all the data together. Right. So in terms of a software architecture, we saw that from 80s and 90s, we had the relational databases and in the in the 2000s and last two decades, we saw going to the NoSQL databases. And now we are really talking about whether graph database is really the way for us to go, because now we are talking about the interactions and the connections between the data of different uh, sources. So what would be the right kind of software architectures or the databases that will really make us uh, create that golden record sort of a thing there. Uh, because on the external side, we also have the whole push coming on the omni-channel side, right? And um, you have your customers coming from Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and, and, and web browsing. So you have multiple channels and then in the they, they might have physical in-store kind of a thing. So the data is coming from multiple channels how do we stitch it together to really build that golden uh, record uh, sort of a thing there? And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about uh, how, how what are some of the most interesting sort of uh, software platforms and paradigms emerging out of uh, this particular uh, research there. So with that, let me, um, Without any further ado, I would like to invite our first panelist, uh, Wei uh, Lu uh, from uh, Huawei. And Wei is actually uh, Director for Data Management at Huawei. And he has worked for Huawei Storage for more than 12 years. And he's uh, expert in the storage production and solutions and the storage management. So Wei, I would like to ask a question. What is your view of the connected data and why do you think it's important? Could you please uh, get started with that question? Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm No Wei. I'm from Huawei. I'm the director of data management department. My team is responsible for a solution, which name is DMS, data management solution. It has three years in the solution, including device data management layer. Name is device measure. Send the data management layer 
lambda DME and the cloud data management layer, lambda is e service. DME is based on Solar's open source project. Its previous name is OpenSDS, and currently the name is hinged to Solar controller. We have many people in other projects, which name is Gelato. It's for hybrid cloud data management. We will come to DL2. This project is the global developers to make an amazing data management engine. Okay, thank you. So, uh, so Lou, thank you. Thank you for introducing yourself. What would be your, what is your view on uh, connected data? What do you, what do you mean in the context of your okay. work? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The extent of data explosion uh, is beyond the predictions. I think there are three data management scenarios now. The first scenario, the users have just one storage device in the environment and they don't have many requirement of data connection in the single storage. The second scenario, the users have many storage devices uh, in the data center. They hope they can manage all storages simply. And uh, maybe they want to move some data from one storage to another together. The third, the third scenario, if the users establish a private cloud or buy some storage and data service in Amanda or Huawei cloud, Maybe they want to make some relationship among the data center and the cloud. You can see today, cloud providers are trying to give solutions for enterprise. Similarly, storage vendors looking to provide cloud-based solutions. We see data everywhere, in fact. In my opinion, the velocity, velocity and the variety of data is exploding. So we if we want to build a valuable business solutions fast, easy to market, then the basic data management O and N should be seamless. Only constructive collaboration can help us to get it there. Soda is looking positive there. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Louie. We'll come back to you. Let me introduce our second speaker, Shane Wong. Shane is Engineering Director for Cloud Infrastructure Software at Intel. And uh, he also is involved in multiple other activities. For example, he's the Vice Chair for Outreach Committee at the Soda Foundation. And he is uh, also the Individual Director of Open Infrastructure Foundation Board. And he's currently working on cloud computing, edge computing, networking, and storage. So welcome, Shane. And I would like to ask the same question to you. What, is, what does connected data mean to you? And why is it important in your view? Hi. Hi, everyone. So my name is Shane. So regarding the data connected, uh, I think it's uh, so I'm not a um, full view of data connected because that's based on the, my answer is based on my, my work. So like uh, the uh, uh, data center and the cloud computing and even the edge computing. So for data center and uh, uh, cloud computing, so we use the, so we call it the uh, uh, software defined storage that is based on the distributed storage. So I, so from my perspective, I think a data connected is to uh, pro offer the uh, distributed storage for the cloud computing uh, to uh, give up the reliable uh, high performance, low latency, and also uh, sta sta stable uh, storage for the cloud computing. And for the edge, I think the, the scenario is totally different because edge, uh, the edge computing is, I, I think it's the next wave of cloud computing. So, but for edge, uh, so we know this, um, and it, I, I think it's a, a very interesting uh, comparison as uh, cloud computing is a move uh, to collect data for the computation. And for edge, it's to move the computation to the uh, storage side, to the user side. So for the edge, I think uh, data connected means that uh, uh, 
first is a, a communication between the central cloud and your edge cloud because we have so many edge cloud. So regarding the regarding the sensors or the, so we uh, definitely uh, refer to this kind of data. And the other thing is the, uh, because the cloud are different. So that's measured by different managers, cloud managers or, or orchestrated by different orchestrators. So cloud, are, I can say it's a heterogeneous. So uh, when we say the data connected uh, means that the data need to be, the format might be different. The system, the storage system might, might be different. So this means that data transformation. So this, the data on this cloud can talk with the other clouds. That is the, the data connected. And uh, I think the last one is uh, about uh, privacy because uh, uh, in edge, we talk about, because the, uh, the, the data is stored, stored on the uh, edge side, it's not uh, on the data center. So we, we are talking more about the security and the privacy. We need to keep the, the so uh, although the data is connected, but security is also most important factor for the data connected. That is my view, thank you. Thank you, Shane. We will discuss more when we come back to you again. Let me introduce the uh, third speaker. Uh, and our third speaker is Ravi. Ravi is director for Azure product management at Microsoft. And he also leads the Azure cloud business group and is responsible for promoting long range planning positioning of Microsoft uh, Azure cloud platform uh, and uh, the Microsoft data services, analytics and intelligence solutions across the customers in India. So welcome Ravi. I would open up with the same question to you as well. What does connected data mean to you and uh, why, why do you think it's important? Sure. Tathagat, uh, you know, first of all, thank you for introducing me. Um, very quickly, you know, connected data is very, uh, quite very simple for me in my view right now. Uh, everything what we do in the organization has to actually come together, provide responses, insights, and resolution uh, for any particular problem you might have. Uh, just to give an example, if you were to ask any of my colleagues, uh, so give me a status about an opportunity uh, which we have been pursuing, the answer would generally be very humane in nature. Uh, will most likely be very connected response. Uh, but our systems don't behave that way. Uh, I, I need to know the name of the opportunity which I'm talking about. I need to go to CRM system. I need to go to ERP system. Uh, I need to go to uh, any other portals and systems which I have, which has given us that information uh, in the past. I might have to go back to a service desk system to find out what has customer given in the past. Uh, a connected data in my view, is the one which basically gets all of this data from multiple data sets talking to each other, provide a correlated and uh, you know connected response, insight and resolution for me. Uh, just to elaborate the point a little bit more uh, on a system, see everybody has phones today. And if I was to ask my Siri or Google, uh, you know, it, it, it already talks to a few other systems for me right now. Uh, it can connect, get connected to ERP, it can connect to CRM, it can connect to other portals to do that. If I ask the same question, the opportunity is pending, uh, the response could be very simple that, um, you know, for example, the opportunity is pending with Seth Tathagat. Uh, he has a very high say do ratio. Uh, you know, it is pending with procurement for a week. We have always got timely orders from this customer for the last five years. Uh, by the way, Tathagat is on leave for the last two weeks, have not made any updates on the engagement for the last two weeks. Um, that's not very normal. Do you want to call him? Now that, if you look at it, and this is a response coming from a system, what it is doing is it is talking to four or five systems in the background, making some correlation for me, making a human response for me, which is really actionable. I don't have to really worry about opportunity anymore, but I do have to worry about what's going on with Tathagat. I might want to call him and find out what's going on with him. Uh, so that's, that's the connected experience for me, uh, in which the insight, information, and response are all connected, correlated, and eventually represents a very human response for me, which I can action it going forward. I hope so, that answers your question. Yeah, no, Sean, I think that's a very interesting point of view, Ravi. And I was just looking at one random data point, which seemed to suggest that, uh, and I don't know how, how representative or how accurate that is, because it was just one single data point. And it said 51% or more organizations use 21 or more digital marketing solutions. Now, I don't know that's a high point or a low point or an average point. So we are talking about just one, which is the digital marketing solutions. Uh, like half of them are using more than 20 
different solutions and here we are talking about bringing a very disparate set of finance and marketing and R&D and customer and everyone together there. How difficult do you think it's a, to me it's a, it has multiple levels, technology is only one part of it. There is a lot of cultural and organizational nuances that might be there. What is your point uh, on, of view on this one Ravi? Yeah, absolutely. See, you know, uh, when you when you gave that statistic about how many people are using what kind of marketing solutions, I, I really don't know whether the data is accurate or not, but it sounds about right. I mean, it sounds very uh, easy for me to digest that fact because that's, that's commonly what we have seen in many of the organizations. Uh, they spend a lot of money because they have to identify a particular solution. So if there is a channel one which they want to uh, propagate some solution with, they will probably have to buy that solution. And then the second channel, the third channel, and it just keeps growing up, growing into. Uh, but when we look at, uh, when we look at all of these channels coming together, uh, I think about this, for each of them, I need to have people, I need to have uh, processes, I need to have technologies, which are going to take care of all of this. Uh, I'm spending a lot of money, uh, me being a CMO, for example, in this particular case, I might be spending a lot of money just to manage and set up all of these systems for me. What I would want to do in future, uh, you know, what I would want to do in future is to just have something which is going to talk to all of them and give me a a better view of my marketing uh, strategy, which I'm kind of executing through all of this. Mm -hmm. The second is it's not only about marketing. I mean, I'm, I'm not a very siloed piece in the organization. And the biggest challenge which I have is that I need to talk to sales. I need to make sure that my engineering is uh, giving me the product which they have promised me, say, for example, a few months ago, but it's still pending right now. And you know, customers are waiting and asking for it. What do I do uh, to make sure that that supply chain within the organization is also taken care of? So if I were to look at a uh, few other systems in the organization. So I need to look at a platform or a solution stack which takes care of my marketing, which is my um, you know, immediate priority and the solution stack which I need to worry about. I also need to look at what it can do to integrate with the engineering, what it can do to integrate with my supply chain uh, from you know vendors I might be interacting with, or it might be integrated with somebody, um, say for example, sales, that what am I creating and eventually what how the sales is propagating from there on. Effectively, just to give me a simple insight saying that, a product released on date X is going to give me a return Y, uh, provided if X, Y, Z and timeline uh, are, are, are being taken appropriately. So in order to get to that point, we need to have that insights and responses. So, you know, making sure that all of these are connected, all of these are correlatable with each other, all of these are able to talk to each other is a very important thing. And I think that's the biggest challenge which we, uh, we, we see very often right now. Does that answer your question? No, no, thanks, Ravi. I think that's a very interesting, and uh, we'll, we'll come back and uh, deep dive into that. But let me go to our fourth panelist, uh, Ichiro Shimada. Ichiro san is a senior manager of business planning uh, with the Optical Disk Archive Business Unit uh, at Sony uh, Imaging Products and Solutions. And he has worked for a long time in the storage system engineering and management. And now he has recently moved to the marketing and the business side. And he's also very experienced in the product planning and other uh, aspects of business development. So my question to you, Ichiro-san, is uh, how do you see the whole area of connected data uh, when you are referring to the optical disk uh, and, 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 and especially when you look at the archival part of the business? Are there things that are very unique to your use cases or your business requirements? Um, <clears throat> um... Yeah, so uh, at first, uh, again, uh, my name is Ichiro Shimada. I'm in charge of the optical disk archive department. And uh, I used to uh, be a, a engineer of a storage engineer, to total storage engineer. But uh, right now we are dealing with uh, only cold uh, data. So that means, uh, so that's why you said that um, some you know, unique uh, storage and uh, uh, from Sony point of view, or our point of view, the connect, connect, uh, connection is, uh, you know, mandatory. So without uh, connecting to uh, other partners, like, um, you know, vertically, we need to connect with the hot storage. And uh, uh, also, uh, for example, uh, today we, we have a lot of, you know, speakers uh, talking about edge uh, edge computing, cloud computing, and that top, that type of top, type of uh, type of things, we need to connect each other. So uh, again, uh, from the cold storage point of view, cold storage cannot survive with uh, only itself. So connecting is uh, mandatory, and uh, 
and also uh, another view is that um, the connection uh, should be standardized uh, from the business uh, point of view. So I don't think that standardization will lead the business. Business will lead the standard standardization. So, um, so I think uh, Soda's activity is a very much you know fundamental, and uh, uh, you have uh, uh, lots of customers here. So that's uh, uh, one of the very very important aspect. And uh, from the based on the customer voice, which uh, today also we we heard a couple of, you know example. But uh, based on those, uh, you know, real customer voice, we need to uh, establish the uh, best uh, standard. Standard. So that's a, a right approach, I believe. Thank, thank you, Ichiro-shan. Uh, I think this this was a very interesting point that you say that uh, your company's position is that the connections are mandatory. We should not just look at data as independent or isolated data objects but we should really look at the connections there um, in in your understanding uh, what problem does it really uh, create for us in terms of whether it is uh, edge computing or networking or storage or archival or even in the intelligence when you are extracting the data again what is what is your sense of the biggest problems that connected data brings to us? Uh, so I'm not sure I'm answering to your question, but uh, from the customer's point of view, user user's point of view, I, I believe one of the very important aspect is uh, how they choose uh, the data to be archived. So if the user will archive everything, then the storage, uh, uh, the storage needs is you know infinite so in order for uh, so ma many speakers today uh, talk uh, the you know storage architecture uh, some storage demand but also cost is very important aspect so in order to choose the right uh, data to be archived uh, that's a uh, very uh, important and uh, in that sense uh, edge computing will you know, uh, will be capable to choose uh, the right um, data. Uh, and, uh, you know, recently, uh, every uh, industry, uh, the in the, every industry, uh, we see the data uh, increasing uh, rapidly. So uh, without edge computing, uh, I don't think uh, that uh, the user will uh, reach to the some reasonable archive solution. Do you, do you also see, you talked about the, uh, uh, the whole context of standardization that the business uh, should be leading it uh, and the users should be able to choose what data they want to archive. Do you also see uh, that there is an opportunity for the equipment makers or the storage uh, vendors uh, to build it with some kind of, uh, and Soda might be able to help with, come up with some standard APIs so that we have a software layer and a hardware layer, and then there is an application layer, which is very neatly separated, which allows interoperability and uh, uh, because there could be multiple clouds or there could even be multiple IoT center, sensors or different type of data. Uh, the, do you see that there is an opportunity that might help the business uh, really leverage uh, multi-vendor scenario or multi-cloud scenario? Um, so it's a you know interesting question, but um, uh, I believe that uh, based on the uh, couple of voices, uh, we we need to start integration anyway. And uh, uh, recently, Sony uh, launched the um, optical disk archive gateway software, which is you know uh, we will provide a very seamless uh, interface to outside outside world. And uh, we start discussing with the click to cloud, and the click to cloud will, uh, you know, specify uh, what what we will we will do in future. So, I believe that uh, starting from the, uh, you know, POC um, uh, or some start from the min minimum uh, requirement is very important uh, from our aspect. Okay, thank you, Chirushan. We'll we'll come back to you again. I want to go now to uh, our first panelist, Lou Wei, uh, and ask on the similar question in terms of what are the biggest problems uh, from his point of view 
when we bring all the connected data together uh, because some data might have uh, a lot of volume right if we have iot sensors we have terabytes of data and coming at a real time basis but some other data may be finance or customer sales data may not be in terabytes may be smaller uh, and may not be real time basis maybe there is a different frequency of the data so how do we bring it together when we are uh, putting it in a storage solution luwe okay in my opinion as i am thinking about uh, about the three scenarios in scenario second like some finance companies in the data centers, they have many storages, many winter storages, such as EMC, NetApp, and Huawei. Many kinds of storages, such as Sun, NAS, and Webject. How to manage all of the storages? How to manage all material genus storage devices? How to make the resource provision and uh, operation more efficient and uh, simple. This is a bigger ch challenge in the scenario. Because every vendor has its own management model and uh, software. It uh, impacts the management efficiency. And it's very difficult to make the resource from different uh, storages together. Then the users can reduce the resource waste. In scenario third, among the data center, private cloud and the public cloud, the amount of data is explosive. As we discussed with many companies, we think the biggest challenge is how to manage a mass of data across hybrid cloud assembly. How to make the relationship among the data clearly. This is my view. Thank you. Thank you, Louis. Uh, I, I will. I want to take this question further to Shane and ask him from the point of view of uh, cloud infrastructure. Um, he also talked about the uh, viewpoint of privacy, Shane. So, how do you? What challenges do you see when you start bringing the connected data together? Uh, bring uh, connected data together. I think the challenge. Uh, so you, you mentioned one of them, that's the security, the privacy. So when we when we do the uh, storage, we was consider like a, a encryption or de uh, decryption for the data. And the way you use the uh, uh, different platform features to, uh, because that's a, that kind of additional operation will uh, re uh, I'll say that it's a, uh, reduce the performance. So we will use the platform features to accelerate the uh, encryption and decryption. So I think security uh, is uh, one of them. Uh, and the other thing I said, uh, many, I think many people um, are talking about is called uh, trust computing. So uh, I can, th there's uh, many technologies uh, in the cloud computing area to deal with that. Uh, such a kind of isolation, use the virtual machines with isolation or use a different technology to uh, keep uh, the data uh, private from the cloud service provider. So uh, I, uh, different partners, different uh, companies have different sol solution. So that is so when you, when you uh, use the data, uh, uh, do some computation based on the data, you, you won't uh, let the, uh, how say that, uh, the, uh, the vendor, the cloud service provider to touch the data, to see the data. So this is a, a technology point. And uh, 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 the other thing I think uh, talking more about is uh, for the data connected uh, is about uh, the latency. Uh, we, it's, I think this is not a, the unique uh, challenge for data connected. So uh, for the latency, uh, we have many uh, methods to improve the latency, uh, to give the high uh, IOPS performance like a cache or uh, to our user, the next generation storage media. And uh, uh, I think another challenge, if the data connected, it means that we have more and more data. So we are consider about uh, the cost. Uh, and so in cloud computing, we talk about, about TCO, how to reduce the cost. So it depends on scenario. Uh, 
I'm from the uh, store, uh, software defined storage area. So I, I do Ceph. So when I know the portfolio uh, reliability, so Ceph will uh, have three copies. But for uh, the other, I think this depends. But for some of the, uh, the scenarios, we don't need that so many, uh, we don't need so many copies to make the data safe because so, uh, the data, I think is uh, probably the data is one time. We just need the result, especially in the edge computing area, there's data connected. So we we just need a, uh, the result. The result is a sort of data. So uh, for the, the edge cluster or edge cloud, uh, edge cloud uh, to communicate with the other uh, like a central cloud or the other edge cloud. We just need the uh, uh, the, the result to be communicated. So I think the cost uh, uh, to consider the cost is uh, why I think is one of the challenge for the data connected because we have many many data. Yeah, I think that is uh, my uh, view for that. Thank Thanks, Jim. I think that's a very interesting uh, list of uh, uh, key considerations you bring, and especially. Uh, I think the performance is a very key part of it uh, because uh, the latency could really have a big impact there because we are trying to um, uh, uh, trying to recreate the connections between data and then I want to really take that question to Ravi because he when he's talking to the customers and building a business case around that performance and reliability and TCO could be very important considerations. So Ravi, my question to you is the extending the same question but more on the business side of it in in terms of what are the challenges you see um, uh, which which uh, happen only when we are trying to stitch the data together into some kind of a possibility of a golden record that i talked about earlier got it okay uh, by the way uh, you know ishira san has already brought it out in certain aspects of it he brought it out and you know we, we have heard that during the conversation as well what, the biggest challenge which we see today is not a single kind of data. I mean, you, you talked about golden record, but I've, I've seen customers who require something which they need a quick analytics and something which they need uh, a long range analytics or historical analytics and all of that stuff. They also need a lot of data which needs to be retained for a very long period of time. So, you know, there is an immediate quick need to quickly get information out of some solution. And then, you know, they, there, is, there is a need for keeping the data for a very long time. So when we look at all of these scenarios, when we talk to our customers, we we get to uh, you know few specific problems uh, with the customers, and we we have noticed that the problems could be one in terms of risk and compliance and security, and you know I remember it came up in the conversation a few minutes ago. The second is uh, managing the costs around all of this uh, becomes a very important aspect of it, and the third one is uh, yeah, and this is rather technical, less business, but you know how do I structure, how do I construct my solution around all of this? Uh, you know, that, that becomes a very important aspect because, you know, uh, you, and I, I keep this, giving this example to a lot of my customers and, you know, just to make this very point, uh, if I'm, and think about an autonomous car, for example, the car, which is say Tesla riding on the road right now, uh, it's running everything by itself. It has to be an amazing server running on the road. It has to be an amazing, excellent edge uh, computing device, which is running on the, uh, on the road because it needs to do a good machine learning. It needs to make sure that it analyzes an obstacle, uh, whether it's a big boulder or a rock or whether it is a real person moving on the road. Uh, it needs to identify that. And it just can't, uh, it has to be done very quickly. It just can't wait for the cloud service to come, go and you know respond back and then you wait for it. In the meantime, I think the accident is gonna happen as it is. So in order to make that happen, see the, the, the fundamentals of few aspects come along is one, how do I manage these risks at my edge device level? Uh, how do I architect my solution in such a way so that, you know, uh, the edge solution is very strong, uh, understand, uh, you know, how, you know, how quickly it can assess that information and, you know, it has good compute and uh, storage in order to manage that. And it also needs historical information. I mean, you know, it's a car, so it needs to find out uh, how is my traffic updated? You know, is, if there is a special day when, say, for example, in front of a specific road, the temple might be blocked. So you need to know, you know, how quickly, how, how can I change my route and all of that stuff. So that's a long range analytics, long range data retrieval solution. So while I'm, I'm giving this as a very stark, ex, you know, example, when we go to the customers, we see trading applications like this, we see connected factories like this, we see, I mean, in, in the current situation, 5G rollout, for example, 
this is going to be a lot important because everything has to be very closely connected. Low latency solutions have to be created. So everybody needs to quickly get that information and just you know proceed and manage that. So while we do all of this, the challenges which we see is in the cost. Challenges we see is the kind of edge solutions which are being given out on either the edge or the cloud, which runs the same stack. And you know that's the biggest disparity which we see. Today, you might have a solution which is running Linux on-premise here, and you might have, say, Windows running somewhere else on the top. Uh, those both cannot talk to each other. The, or the stack doesn't match with each other, and so on and so forth. Uh, so you need to have something which, which talks to each other seamlessly, interoperate uh, appropriately. And finally, the most important one is that, you know, how do I manage risks? How do I manage uh, this disconnected device or a connected device, which is kept, you know, far away uh, in the corner of a different office, which is very important for me, but also at the cloud, uh, you know, the data, which is retended for the customers for a long range period. So these are the three challenges and risks, which I keep seeing uh, when we look at uh, managing data across different customers and various different conversations. I know I went, uh, you know, three different places, but I just thought, you know, it will make a more compelling point uh, to describe what I'm thinking about. This. No, I think that that makes a lot of sense, Ravi. And I, I think the car example you give is very interesting because uh, one of the things that I keep thinking about is the whole edge AI use case where you have a, a Tesla car, for example, which is an autonomous uh, smart vehicle. And then we are really looking at the ability to really process that edge uh, AI really, because when you have a fleet of millions of vehicles, you cannot really have a very centralized view, worldview. Uh, and then uh, the, that still has to talk to a backend server somewhere. So like, for example, is the, is the coexistence of a 5G connectivity really a mandatory imperative or is it inconsequential to the infrastructure that we are talking about? What's your view on this? Let me say, uh, so first of all, when and, and think about this, when, when I say 5G, uh, you know, 5G is going to be a technology which would require both the uh, both the aspects. You need to have that far range, uh, you know, internet access being made available, but you also need a lot of this low latency solutions which have to be there. Uh, and if your question is about whether these are in the 5G, uh, you know, technology stack with, say, for example, autonomous data are inconsequential to each other. No, absolutely not. They're very, very closely connected to each other. Uh, because, you know, and think about this. And, and right now, for example, I'm looking out of the window and I'm looking at, say, for example, three or four large, uh, you know, devices which are standing by and giving me phone connections today. That will become some 20 or 30 of them in future, which means that those, all of them will have an edge device, which is running right next to them. All of them will have um, a solution which is going to do machine learning, you know, move me different cells ac accordingly at different points of time. So, you know, it becomes very important when I'm going to drive my car and assuming that I have Tesla in future. So, for example, when it comes to India uh, and I'm driving my car, I should be able to connect to each other uh, to the closest edge device, quickly giving me machine learning analytics about, you know, I'm seeing a completely different, uh, you know, bolder kind of a stuff, which I've not seen there before. How do I assess what is it? I mean, should I take a detour? Should I not take a detour? So something of that kind has to happen. So all of these technologies are going to work together, edge to edge, edge to cloud and cloud to cloud, uh, in which case it becomes very connected uh, and not interconnected at all. I, I hope I answered your question. Sure, no, absolutely. No, I think that's that's great, uh, Ravi. Yeah. So my last question to all the panelists, and I start with you, Ravi, so that we can uh, uh, use while you are in the uh, air time, is what solutions do you, em you see emerging in the next, let's say, three to five years uh, because these are some of the problems and it's very clear that the connected data need is rising. Uh, the organizations have to get connected there. It seems like that from a network and storage point of view, we do have some a lot of progress happening. If we look at the cloud level, there is a lot of uh, activity happening. If I look at above the cloud in terms of stitching it and, and, and kind of culling out the intelligence, those use cases are emerging. So it seems like if I see below the cloud, at the cloud and above the cloud level, we do have a, a, a series of use cases where the technology is supporting it. But I'm just trying to understand and put it all together and say what solutions could really be emerging. Do you see some kind of, if you have to put your money on two or three big things, what would they be, Ravi? Okay, um, and th that's a very broad question, Tathagat, but you know, let me attempt to answer this. Um, in the best of my understanding of what, what I do. And I, I always try to do this in a, uh, in a little business point of view, which helps me uh, make this idea overall very simple in my head. Um, I, I firmly believe on one aspect and you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not very far off from this point, but if you think about this, uh, companies like Ola, Uber, uh, 
retail companies like Walmart, the place where you come from, or you know Amazon.com, and all of these are much less. I mean, of course, they are retail companies. Of course, they are taxi companies, but they are much more of a software company for themselves. Which means the overall solution stack which they are investing on uh, is becoming very, very important. And you know, when well, I the point you said, it reminds me of that uh, one of the bank CEO said, "We are really a software company with a banking license." And I think I would like to see ourselves really as a software company with a storefront. I mean, that that might be the new emerging uh, paradigm that that we all have to embrace, I guess. Absolutely, and you know, and that that's a reality today. And 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 not not only this, I'm seeing a lot more new companies, especially in the finance and insurance sector, where we are seeing a lot more technology driven and all of that. Now, why did I mention about this? The reason I mentioned about this is because now a person who has to innovate a solution doesn't want to do this entirely from bottoms up. you know they they need they not everybody wants to understand what is data governance not everybody wants to understand how to do deep analytics not everybody wants to understand uh, how to do analytics not everybody understands how to manage this amazing amount of data which i'm going to get from phone devices computers and you know transactions which keep happening in the front and center what they need is a is a stack which is going to grow from bottoms all the way to the um, all and you, you brought up one example few few minutes ago which is about you know having multiple marketing solutions and multiple erp solutions and multiple crm solutions which i have i might have in a company the the biggest the biggest investments which i'm going to see in the in the future is primarily uh, to get that one single platform which is going to help me to have all of these solutions to talk to each other so that's the biggest investment which i'm going to see many many companies are going to do uh, i'm i'm sure you know if 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 you have to build up flipkart or amazon grounds up today you probably wouldn't be spending the same amount of money and time which they have spent 10 15 20 years ago you probably will be doing much faster uh, with much better stack much better solutions which you know we heard from intel we heard from sony and we heard from uh, you know uh, microsoft any other any other solution uh, for that matter the idea here is that the overall stack uh, will emerge in, in such a way so that you know it becomes one plug and play and much easier to uh, play around and you know buy and you know fit into your overall business scheme the second day it is also going to give you a lot of integration solutions uh, around each other so that you know if you were to acquire a company a uh, into company b right now and you know how do we integrate each other so those are things which are be- going to become much easier uh, so effectively what i'm talking about the integration technologies are going to become more important and important uh, while i say that uh, we at microsoft i mean i think we understand this opportunity really well uh, what we understand is that hundreds of customers which we have seen don't want to do this from grounds up uh, so our job is to make sure that there are three things which we provide we provide integration we provide scale and we provide scale at low lowest amount of cost and we give you a platform for you to pick and choose what you really like i mean if you like a best of best in class solution you just use that um, you know solution and reduce cost out of all of this now having to do all of this is what i think i would bet my money on so having a good cloud provider who understands my business uh, bet my money on somebody who understand edge and cloud together like we talked about autonomous scenario i would bet my money on uh scenarios and solutions which are going to give me a grounds up vertical oriented solution line for example i don't really want to care about uh, which channel should i use but if i am able to do a marketing solution which is going to get to my five channels and uh, isp is able to provide that and it's running on a platform a i just want to use this as a saas and just get it over there so that's how i think um, uh, you know the economy is going to develop and it's it's going to keep growing that's my perspective there okay thanks thanks ravi interesting interesting perspective because uh, uh, we have seen uh, this is the holy grail of uh, erp world we have seen like uh, we it was always supposed to be that the next wave of solutions is going to be the mother of all solutions and will replace the 21 disparate systems but it probably uh, we are still far away but i think it's interesting thing because the use cases are very compelling but uh, let me ask the same question to other panelists and understand their thought process so i want to go this time to shane and ask his que- the same question what solutions do you see emerging in uh, at least in your areas on on cloud computing and storage and edge computing which are which are the solutions for the next uh, few years 3 to 5 years which will help us solve all these challenges together shane yeah yeah okay so i think today i uh, i talk more about security so uh th- i think this is the uh one of my focus area so for data connected uh, uh if i have much money so i will invest in the security area for privacy and uh, i know this uh, uh a concept that very uh, it's a very interesting and uh, very promis- promising it's called a confidential computing 
So uh, especially for the financial data, um, I know this, uh, but probably in, I think in the future, uh, like uh, um, like edge computing. So the application applications and the cloud infrastructure are provided by different vendors. So um, I think uh, the confidential computing is to solve the problem uh, be between the uh, the uh, the provider, the cloud provider, and the, the application provider. So uh, I think right now uh, many companies um, are doing the job, are doing the confidential computing in this in this area. So uh, especially for the bigger uh, uh, cl cloud providers. So uh, I think. Uh, that's it. that is what I care right now, and uh, I have something to add. Uh, like um, for the uh, because I, I mentioned that the other thing is a uh, um, heterogeneous clouds because the data probably from different area. The cloud uh, format are different, so I I want to uh, highlight the uh, the SODA framework is the it the target is to solve the problem. Uh, SODA can solve the problem for from the data, uh, for the data from uh, OpenStack, it's our project, a uh, cloud project. Also can solve the data uh, from uh, Kubernetes. So in, no matter if it is a VM, it's from VM or the container. But I think it's not, it's not enough because uh, this is a, a fundamental infrastructure uh, data service. So re uh, regarding more like a database, or the big data, uh, no matter it's Hadoop or, or the Spark. So we have we have more to do. I think uh, right now, uh, Soda is a good start point and for the heterogeneous uh, data connection. And uh, for I think for more, uh, we can do more. But uh, for myself, yes, that is uh, that is my point to uh, to invest. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Shane. Thank you. I think that's again a very interesting. Uh, the whole idea of confidential computing is uh, very interesting. I had heard of the term trusted computing, but confidential computing is a uh, is an interesting area uh, there. But do you think uh, adoption of blockchain inside the enterprise could be a game changer because it could reduce the need for maybe it could change the use case for confidential computing by using blockchain inside the organization? Uh, sorry, I'm not the guy from the blockchain, but uh, per my understanding, blockchain is to solve the problem like of trust, but the confidential computing is not. It's uh, so I can I can run the workload on your infrastructure, but I will not let you know, let you see any data. That is the confidential. I think that is uh, the problem confidential computing would like to uh, solve. But yeah. uh, for blockchain, yeah, I think it's trust computing. It's, uh, it's, Probably it's not a correct because I'm not a guy from blockchain. Sorry. No problem. I was just trying to understand and see if there is a high level difference from that. But I appreciate your response, Shane. Thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, same question. I want to go to Ichiro San now and uh, understand from the uh, from the optical storage and from data center and and archival point of view. What are some of the most uh, interesting technologies that he uh, that you see in the next few years? Um, yeah, the, regarding the, you know, in case I talked about the technology, then I pretty much you know, you know, rely on our technology. So let, let me uh, answer to a different way that, um, so uh, as uh, Ravi san uh, said that one of the, you know, potential uh, investment uh, things is a one single platform and uh, i fully agree with that and uh, our customer uh, also looking at the uh, to uh, harmonize all of the storage island but uh, uh from my experience uh probably 80 percent or 90 percent customers in reality is that uh, they, they have a lots of you know um different uh, storage island and the uh, uh it's very important for customer to how to um, uh, establish the real storage system on top of that. Even there is a you know uh, existing storage, then uh, in that sense, uh, I really uh, again I really expect a very uh, high expectation for Soda, and the, our role uh, in Soda is to um, how to say uh, to make the, our connection as close as possible to uh, the customer's ideal world. 
And the customer's ID word is like, a, you know, customer will be, be able to choose the storage uh, system uh, wherever it is, uh, like uh, topping for the pizza. And the, uh, right now, the, in, in case the customer will choose the storage, they need to understand uh, all of the detail uh, of each storage solution. But uh, uh, if the soda, uh, it, through the soda's foundation, uh, we will be able to uh, standardize uh, all of the you know, uh, connection between storage and storage, then the, we will be able to provide the, uh, uh, the very much you know, ideal world to the customers. And the, um, for, for example, uh, our storage, uh, I'm you know, dealing with the optical storage and the, uh, each storage has its characteristic. And for example, optical storage has the uh, you know, very much uh, robust um, capability to uh, you know, store the data. So it, the data once uh, written on the uh, optical storage, then it's perfectly you know, secured. But uh, of course, the latency is very, uh, sometimes it's as slow, uh, you know, comparing to the uh, solid storage uh, technology or, uh, you know, hard disk drive. So, uh, so th this is one of the example, but uh, we are, uh, you know, continuously, day by day, we are continuously to uh, try to standardize uh, our uh, software interface as much as possible. But again, uh, we cannot uh, complete uh, this activity within, you know, one vendor. So, uh, the SODA's foundation and the connecting to others is very much key uh, for us to move the business forward. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Lastly, I would like to ask uh, the question. I think uh, Ravi, uh, our panelist, has a hard stop. So thank you, Ravi, for uh, being with us. And uh, uh, yeah, if, if any questions are there, you can reach out to Ravi or to the conference teams later on. Thank you. Thank you very yeah. much, Nupakat, and thank you very much, SODA Foundation team. Yeah. Uh, so lastly, I want to also ask the question to Louie uh, on what is his uh, understanding or what is his thinking about the solutions in the future, which will help us solve the data, uh, connected data challenges. Okay. Well, you have you, huh? uh, to the senior second, which is about the multi storage. It's very important to have a unified management capability for all heterogeneous storages, including unified standard and uh, reference framework. Then the users can build a logical storage resource pool based on the capability. I mentioned the center data management engine, DME. They use the SODA as its framework for heterogeneous storage management and uh, is used in many finance companies production product environments now. That is a scenario third. We need uh, some hybrid cloud management features such as metadata management, data move across clouds and so on. Huawei and some partners are uh, designing it together, like uh, China Unicom. We have a joint term solution with uh, Gelato and uh, Eagle. Eagle is uh, contributed to Soda from China Unicom. The joint solution supports the unified management of object storages from the mainstream storage windows and the cloud windows, such as Huawei Fishing Storage. Amanda, Google Cloud, Huawei Cloud, and so on. This is my opinion. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Louis. I think that's very interesting that you talk about uh, the unified management capability and also uh, on the metadata management. And I think, I, I hope that Soda Foundation can actually help all of us uh, by coming up with uh, even more frameworks on that. Uh, with that, I know that we have just uh, 10 minutes left. Uh, I want to open it up for any Q&A session here. Um, I think we have one or two questions here. So I will just read them out uh, 
and I would uh, look up to our panelists, uh, anyone uh, uh, from Shane or Ichiro-san or Luwe, anyone to answer that. First question we have is, uh, yes, 5G network is a good example to work uh, with the era of internet, but how to deal with 5G in exploring since the 4G data is providing so much latency to work over the internet? Like what are the, uh, I, I don't know if the question is complete there or not, but I think uh, to me it seems like that uh, what would be uh, what would be the challenges in dealing with the latency in 5G uh, since it's still under development uh, there. A any Any of you would like to take up on this? Okay, I guess, uh, sorry, please go ahead. Yeah, I, I'm just uh, looking at uh, the question. So how to deal with uh, 5G? So are, are they ch challenging the 5G latency? I don't know. What could... Yeah, I'm not sure, uh, Ayush. Uh, 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 maybe if you want to just come and unmute yourself and just uh, uh, tell us your question. My, meanwhile, we'll go ahead and go to the second question. Uh, from Weber, which is what is Soda's application on edge computing? Uh, anyone would like to answer that one? Uh, uh, Tathagat Anvit here. Yes, so sir. I believe uh, Soda's application edge computing, you can probably check out uh, the day two demo, which we have, the Hawaii pre uh, preview demo. Uh, we will be discussing something on that. So. Uh, it's still in uh, beta place, so we are going to be announcing uh, uh, the work on that. So you can definitely check that out. Uh, when it comes to the first one, okay, there is another question. I think we can take that up. Uh, yeah, I think it went away, but it was something to do with uh, documentation on connected data. Uh, okay. At least my understanding is that there is no real uniform, consistent, one single answer to that because everyone has a different view on that if you are a storage maker or if you are a cloud uh, service provider or if you are a business intelligence provider there are different views of that and every enterprise could have very different use cases uh, but i i would uh, i would certainly need to look at multiple of these layers before we can get to that but uh, uh, so that's how at least i would see but anvit were you also saying adding something to this yeah, uh, there, there is another question which I uh, have here. Uh, this is the offline question. So uh, edge and cloud storages, what are the real customer requirements these days, apart from the notional ones for these new technologies? Okay, so the, the, the first was edge and the second one you said was which one? So the question is edge and cloud storages. Storage. What are the, yeah, edge and cloud storages. What are the real customer requirements these days? apart from the notional ones for these new technologies. Okay. So uh, maybe this we could have uh, open to all our panelists, uh, maybe Ichiro-san, you would like to talk about, like for the edge and the cloud computing, what are the some of the real use cases that we are seeing uh, from customers' point of view? Um, yeah, to be honest, I'm not familiar with the uh, you know edge computing. But uh, when I uh, when I heard the edge computing, then uh, it's uh, my uh, it's automatically remind me like a uh, um, uh, automotive uh, you know industries uh, workflow or use case, and uh, it's you know the each car has a uh, lots of um, uh, data. And uh, if I heard uh, from the other guy that uh, if uh, the data uh, which will be produced uh, with the one car, uh, everything will go to the cloud, then the cloud will be, you know, explored. So uh, I think uh, that type of, uh, you know, workflow, edge computing will be a uh, uh, key. Okay, thank you. Uh, Luwe, you yeah. want to add something to this? Oh, sorry, Shane, you wanted to go first? Uh, okay, I think Louis can go first. Go ahead. Louis. Mm, maybe you can go uh, ahead. Yeah. Okay, okay. I, I, I saw the question. So uh, what's the, I, I tenderly um, 
a presentation to, uh, this morning. So uh, we are looking at uh, the uh, real industry from Alibaba. The, the, the product is called uh, uh, Timo Genie. It's a device to uh, play the video uh, for the students. And uh, the, I think the, I, I also to look at the, the architecture, the overall architecture of the, the device, uh, the, uh, the backend, they are not doing any rendering or only local device. They do the rendering and the, uh, the other operations on uh, in the uh, edge, edge clouds uh, backend. The, uh, it's, a, it's like a CDN, but it's not a CDN. Uh, so I think this uh, this is a kind of real uh, requirements. This uh, like uh, uh, removed from not removed, just moved from the computation from a device to the edge clouds. And the other thing is uh, uh, to uh, save the data, save not save the data on the only device, but save the data, uh, cache the data on the edge clouds. This is not about a new notion of the new technology. It's about real device, a uh, real requirements from Alibaba. Timo Genie, it's a it's a device. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. thanks. Okay. Uh, Luwe, last uh, last comment from you on this. Luwe. Hello. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you then. So I think with that, we are out of time now. I know there are uh, one or two questions which are maybe not answered. We have run out of time. We will not be able to take them right now. But I want to really thank all my panelists. Uh, Ravi had to drop off, but I really want to thank Ichiro-san, uh, Lu Wei, and Shane Wong uh, for really a very, very participative and very enriching conversation. I hope it was helpful to all the panelists. And with that, I want to hand it over back to you, Anvit, uh, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Tathagat. As always, a pleasure to listen to panels run by you. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, Velo. Thank you, Ravi. Thank you, Ichiro-san. And thank you, Tathagat, for that lovely panel discussion. A uh, lot of questions asked. Uh, if your question wasn't answered on screen, uh, we will try to get you the answer. We will discuss with the panelists. Uh, but please make sure that you do ask your questions. Uh, we do want to know what you're thinking. Uh, thank you again all.